Don't be bemused, it's just 4x8 News. Hi, I'm Marie and welcome back to 4x8 News. News that encourages. Troubling news giving you the blues? Don't you worry, there's more to that story. Today's top story, the Alford family grows again. Just like every good tale, this one starts off with hard work, but ends in lots of love and a little bit of happily ever after. Let's go to one of our reporters to get the full scoop. At the first of the year, as America initially began to react to the pandemic and the country went into lockdown, many families seeking both foreign and domestic adoptions became stuck in a holding pattern. With the courthouses and borders closed, many children's futures were held in limbo. The Alford family was one such family. As months begin to pass, with a little bit of creativity and with the help of technology, families have begun to once again be able to adopt their children. This week, the Fellowship Hall of North End Baptist Church became a courtroom. Aided by technology, a courtroom assembled, and after 303 days in foster care, the Offered family adopted their son. It was a day filled with joy for the family and friends who joined both in the fellowship hall and online. There may not have been the official gavel pounded in a courtroom, but that does not change the fact that Briggs has found his forever home. Today we adopted uh, our son, uh, made it official, and we are now uh, with five children. Officially Biggie Smiles! <laughs> Today we had an adoption from my little brother. Today we uh, adopted my Biggs. It was different than adopting Brooks because we were on a Zoom call. Um, I saw that there wasn't that much people and um, we didn't go to the judge's room. And Where was the judge? It, she was at her house, I think. I don't know. Did the judge say anything funny? Um, yeah. What the judge say that was funny? She spilled her milkshake. Other than we had to do it by Zoom and not in the courtroom, it was... It was awkward. No, it wasn't too, too bad. We got to go in the court and be, like, surrounded by all of these professional people for Brooks. But with Briggs, we had to be socially distanced. So we had to adopt over Zoom. There was no gavel to smack. There was no, like, courtroom filled with anxiety and pressure. Like, it was just... We didn't get to, a meeting. We didn't get to take pictures with the judge. Mm -hmm. But no less official. <laughs> what um, what was memorable about Briggs's adoption? What we what will stick out to you the most? Um, that it was on Zoom. Yeah, for well, sure. And we were surrounded by our family and friends still. Like we were able to be here and have the most important people to us here with us. And the ones that couldn't be here were able to join via YouTube. So when the people in Colorado and Austin that couldn't come to the building and wouldn't have been able to be here for an adoption on 9.30 on a Thursday, they were able to join us and watch the adoption over Zoom. So while it was different, it actually brought more people together to be there for him today. Mm -hmm. I think people should adopt because um, it's helping the little ones who doesn't have, who doesn't have a home have a home. Well, if their kids don't have a lot of fun like playing, they can have so they can like foster and help their kids like have more fun and have adventures with new people and learning new techniques to do things. Okay. It's important to adopt because it's saving um, kids that need help getting a home whenever their parents couldn't take really good care of them. I would definitely tell anyone considering adoption to go for it. Um, we have had adoptions where we thought we were going to adopt and it didn't happen. So we have had that heartbreak of a kid leaving that we thought was going to stay forever. But in the same sense, every single heartbreak and every single time, it was worth it for the ones that did stay. Because even the ones that left, we made a difference in their life for the time that they were with us. And then we forever got the ones that God intended for us to be with because he made that possible. 
I'm excited to have Biggs as my brother because I'll have um, more people to play with if the girls don't want to play with me. Do you think that your family's done or do you think you might get another one? <laughs> I'm one of 12 kids. Do you think that your family is complete now? My family is uh, complete yeah, now unless I hope. God says otherwise. <laughs> I hope so. We cautiously say yes. <laughs> if these don't pictures don't put a smile on your face, we don't know what will. This is definitely good news from our local area. Thanks for the report. A new baby is always a blessing and a cause for celebration. Hey, with summer coming to a close, everyone should make the most out of the time remaining. Movie nights and stargazing are just a few of the ways you can spend time and bond with your parents, siblings, and even your cousins. Speaking of cousins, did you know that July 24th was Cousins Day? Why not get a late start on the celebrating and invite some family over to try out some of these fun adventures? You won't regret it. Oh, sorry, didn't see you there. Hey, are you the people that want to learn how to have an awesome movie night? Well, you came to the right person. I'm Holly, Hollywood, but you can just call me Holly. The first step to an awesome movie night is picking the right movie. I personally love Star Wars movies, so I picked one to watch. But if you're in a family with multiple kids, or you just don't want one person deciding what to watch, try a majority vote. The movie with the most votes wins. Or if you're kind of going in for a long run, everybody gets to pick a movie to watch. The second step to having an awesome movie night is having some snacks to go with it. To make them even better, theme them to the show that you're watching. For the movie I picked, graham crackers that are hexagonal with cheese in the middle that's cubed makes great TIE Fighters. And for a sweeter option, use marshmallows and chocolate graham crackers instead. And also, popcorn's always a tried and true snack. Don't forget to make a prop to play with. Thanks, prop! Props are a great way to have fun after the movie's over. Just reenact some of your favorite scenes. You can even get your kids to dress up. Have fun with it. I am your father. Finally, gather some blankets and pillows and converge at the couches. It's movie time. Oh, and one more thing. Don't forget to silence those cell phones. Hi, I'm Susie Sunshine, and tonight I have a very special report. We're going to talk about night sky gazing. So maybe you've wondered what's a quiet, peaceful way to spend time as a family. Well, there's a variety of ways that you can gaze up at the heavens and see the glorious stars that the Lord has created. You can use an old fashioned star chart, figure out your space, look at it, figure out the time, what time of month it is, and hopefully find out what's in the sky. You can also look at a variety of websites that will show you how you can find specific things in the sky at the specific day that you're looking for in your specific area. So it's going to be a little more um, localized. It's also going to help you know, oh, I should be looking this direction for this. Or you can download an app. There's a variety of them. Tonight I am using the app called Star Tracker not a paid advertisement. So you can hold it up to the sky and it's going to show you what you're looking at. Oh, I didn't know that I was looking at that particular constellation. It'll also show you other night objects like satellites and planets, other things that you might think you're seeing a star, but it's really just something that's going around the world like a satellite. So all of this cool information is at your fingertips. Grab a blanket, get your kids outside, and look up at the glory of the heavens that the Lord has created. Thanks Holly and Susie. Those both seem like great ways to wrap up a summer vacation and have fun while you do it. 
Speaking of fun, I think it's time for our weekly fun fact. Did you know that if you bang your head against a wall for an hour, you'll burn 150 calories? Ouch. If you want to burn calories without scrambling your brains up, try walking around your neighborhood for 45 minutes. It burns the same amount of calories, but without the excruciating head pain. Oh, look at the time. Let's head over to our weekly Bible forecast to wrap this segment up. For today's forecast, we have John 16:33. These things I have said to you that you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. So that no matter what our weather looks like, no matter what our world looks like, we know that we are overcomers. It's your birthday, it's your birthday, you're one year old. It's your birthday, it's your birthday, stand up and take a bow. You're bigger, smarter, better looking than you've ever been before. Let's bake a cake, let's have a party, let's dance all over the floor. Thanks for sharing that insightful verse. I'm sure it will give us a lot of positive thoughts to dwell on this week. I'm Marie Neelan, and thanks for tuning in to 4 by 8 News. Tune in next week for more news that encourages. And now you know the rest of the story.